Okay, so let's take this puppy live. It's Friday night. Oh, what is the date? March 22nd. I have some nice, hot, fresh. I have to say fresh. I have some nice, fresh, hot chocolate. And it's it's nice and warm, but not where it's going to burn. So welcome. Welcome, family. What you guys doing? It's been another week. I can't believe it's been a whole week. It's going to be Christmas before we can even say shalom. <laughs> okay, so... Let's turn on. Randy is here. Full moon tonight, folks. I have taken some pictures with the APS uh, 50 to 200 plus the 100 to 400. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi, Randy. How are you doing? It's always fun when Randy's in the room, right? So I don't know why they sent, uh, sent it separately. But I got the 100 to 300 uh, Panasonic. Where am I? Over here. 100 to 300, the Panasonic Micro Four Thirds, which would make this 200 to 600. Woody, eat your heart out. A 600 millimeter lens in a box this small. The camera itself is only that big. Okay, so we're going to open that box up. And then I'm going to close it back up. Because I'm going to do another opening on Sunday night for the live show for Sunday night. Um, I have my uh, 42.5 millimeter lens, which is one of my favorite lenses right here. Uh, and I haven't been able to use it at all, at all, at all, at all. I'm almost like stuck. So we're on the Randy camera right now, the Randall cam. So this is a camera that Randy has here. Uh Randy has a um, uh, a camera and lens rental company, and it's only open to Peter. <laughs> so uh, the camera that you're looking at now is a Randy cam. And actually, the lens that's on there right now is uh, uh, Randy's lens. When he found out I don't have a true um, Nikon uh, Z, uh, you know, S-mount for the uh, Z, whatever, the mirrorless camera. And uh, he sent me this lens to use. And then he said uh, he'll be over to pick it up sometime. So Randy will come out to, to visit me. So tonight, what are we going to do tonight? We're going to open this. We're going to take a look at it. Obviously, I can't do much because we're in here. And then I thought that was dust. It's not dust. Uh, then I'm going to pack it up because Sunday night, I want to uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, I will take some pictures with the 200 to 600 millimeter. I have no idea. Would he help? What the heck am I going to take pictures of with up to 600 millimeters in my yard? Okay, I have no clue. I'm just going to walk out there and see what I can find. And it's going to go on this Nikon, uh, except Nikon. Uh, sold this company to Panasonic. I'm kidding, okay, because I shouldn't have said Nikon. This is a Panasonic G9 Mark II. So when you actually talk crap, you got to fix it up. And then you got to look up there to see what camera I'm on, okay? So we got some people in here. We better get started. So Randy's in here. How you doing, Randy? Um, he's saying full moon out tonight. Is it is it like one of those big, huge full moons? He's taking some pictures with his uh, APS-C 50 to 210 and 100 to 400. So on APS-C, that'll be 200. Before. Hey, you, you're running 600 also. Cool for you, Randy. So Randy's giving that a thumbs up. Charles is in the house. Um, hello, my friends. Uh, he said something called UltraFest. I'm not quite sure what that is. Boy, this picture looks nice over here. What does it look like uh, on your monitor? It looks really, really pretty. So this is the Nikon ZF camera, which is Randy's camera. Uh, uh, it's on loan from my buddy. And he also has his 85 millimeter. Uh, what is it, Randy? I think it's a 1.8 lens on there. Now this is the Panasonic S5 um, Mark II, which means it's got the new focus system on it. So that makes it 
uh, uh, really nice. So um, Lewis is here. Lewis is just a stone's throw up the street. How you doing, Lewis? Tell Aiden. Aiden, Peter says hi. Peter says hi. Oh, and you know who else? I think we got some grandkids in here tonight. And kids. So Aiden is Mr. Camera Junkie's young uh, young man. Okay, his little man. All right. And Aiden is probably playing with his toys there by on the floor near his daddy. All right. And if Sly gets to come in, uh, she went to get her little man. And that's her grandson. So when I know he's listening, let me know, Sly, so I could say a special hello for him. It'll get him all happy and excited. I made a really good hot chocolate. I can't stop sipping on it. All right, willpower, Peter. Willpower. Just put the hot chocolate down. Jim is here. I did get a a text from Jim today. Hi, Peter and everybody. Happy Friday. Oh, you say that every week, Jim. You say happy Friday every week. I'm just teasing him because I'm only live on Friday. But now I think this Sunday will be either what? Week five or week six that I'm actually doing a live show on Sunday night. So I'm actually doing, I did a little bit shift on the big channel where I'm doing a live show, but it's not like this where I say, hi, Lewis, hi, Jim, hi, Randy. Okay, I'm, I don't do that on Sunday night. I basically uh, just only go and stay on topic because uh, Sammy got me petertalksalot.com because peter.talksalot.com. So on Sunday night, we have peterdoesntalkalot.com. <laughs> I wonder if that one's available too. All right. So I stay on topic. So I will start off talking about a camera or a lens. Stay on topic. I only want to be live on Sunday night. I like to tar target uh, like 15 minutes. That's what I would like it uh, to be. 15 minutes. And it's basically like recording a show. But instead of recording it and then going over to um, uh, with a software on the computer, uh, Final Cut Pro or something... And uh, and trimming it up and stuff, I just do, I record the whole thing live. Everybody watches me do it live, so that is uh, the difference. I'm trying it. Let's see what happens. Sammy says hi, everybody. Hi, Sammy. How you doing, big guy? Sammy and Joey were down here. Uh, was it last weekend? I think it was last weekend. I don't remember. I think it was. And uh, but they were t up in the middle of the state, so they weren't able to come down because it was like over an hour, an hour and 20 minutes to get down here. And they were basically down here just for a few hours. Uh, uh, Joey had to see a relative or something like that. So hi, Sammy. Thank you for being here. Uh, Sammy. Uh, what did Sammy? Oh, Sammy went swimming. And I think he got a slight sunburn out in the Florida sun. Mr. Sexy went over to the beach. So that was pretty cool. And look who's here. Woody is here. Wowzer. I think he's wowing the uh, 100 to 300 lens. We're going to open that in a few minutes. But the show just started, right? We're not even hit 10 minutes yet. I got to get me another sip. We're not. I'm going to get me another sip of the hot. You guys should get some hot chocolate so you can have some hot chocolate with me. Wouldn't that be cool? Or hot coffee or hot tea. I don't know what's the temperature where you're at. So... Uh, I think it's hot down in Australia, if anyone's here from Australia. I think it's hot there. I want to put this down right here. But I'm very concerned about toppling it over and getting hot chocolate on the G9 or on the 100 to 300 lens. I think I put a, a link to the G9 because uh, it's uh, B and H that sent me the uh, uh, the camera and B and H sent me this lens. Now for some reason they sent it separately. I do know the reason, but we're not going to go into that. Uh, so this just came in just a little while ago. Uh, so I haven't even opened it up. We'll we'll open it up together. We'll put it on the camera. Um, this is a 42.5, which uh, 
it gives you the focal length of uh, what? It's double. So that's an 85 millimeter uh, lens, okay? Uh, so this runs and, and looks like 85, but this is an f1.2. This is an expensive lens. One of my favorite lenses. It's a Leica Lumix lens, and it, let me tell you something. It's got that Leica look. It's got that coating on there. She looks gorgeous. So um, Sammy says uh, no sharing photos tonight. Uh, no, I think that's obvious. Oh, I saw pictures of Sammy when he was a little boy. Cutest thing in the whole wide world. I bet some of you guys, your baby pictures, I bet make you look really, really gorgeous. So, uh, yep, this is the new lens right here. Uh, and Charles says, uh, new shirt. Well, thank you for noticing, Charles. Charles. Well, this is the, uh, I have a shirt that I don't like because it's too tight in the hips. Sly taught me how to speak properly, okay? So it's too tight in the hips. So I upped it to a large, too tight in the hips. I don't know what their problem is, so I just sent it back. You could do that on Amazon now. Did you know you can actually send things back if you don't like them? So I sent it right back. And Van Heusen, which is this guy, which is an old shirt company. I remember it from when I was a kid, Van Heusen shirts. So this is a medium. And look, I'm, I'm still losing weight. I was 150 even this morning. So I'm bouncing to the lower end. I want to crack into the 140s now. Okay, so uh, I have been getting, uh, I don't want to say strict because it sounds kind of bad. Uh, but I know a few of you, like, uh, well, I'm not going to name names, are trying to go carnivore for their health. So for health reasons, I know at least two people that are going carnivore. I know one person that is trying to lower their sugar. Wait a minute, I know a second one. So there's two people trying to lower their sugar. Uh, so we're actually doing very... Very good. So my hot chocolate has got a half a teaspoon of Hershey's uh, cocoa, cocoa powder, okay? Um, and I got the dark chocolate, but not because it's a dark chocolate. Oh, I do like dark chocolate, all right? But not because it's a dark chocolate, but because uh, when they make the dark chocolate one, they do it uh, with a process called um, a Dutch process. And that actually uh, lowers the acidity. Because I don't like when I eat chocolate all these years, okay? Uh, and it sits in your stomach with an acid kind of a feedback. This doesn't do that. So I have a half a teaspoon of Hershey's cocoa. I don't think there's, I don't think there's one gram of carbohydrate in that, okay? Hot water, obviously. And about five, six... Maybe seven, I'm, I probably cheated, uh, tablespoons of uh, heavy cream. So there's no uh, zero to none or almost very little uh, uh, sugars in this. So this is actually a low-carbohydrate, higher-calorie, but low-carbohydrate drink. And I gave it a little shot of coconut milk, too. Put a little flavor in there, you know. The only thing wrong is it's addictive. <laughs> or I'm craving chocolate tonight like crazy. One of the two. Uh, pop, pop, pop. Is, uh, is it a macro lens? This one? Let me see. I didn't even look to see. It's a 100 to 300 f4 to 5.6 uh it's a power ois uh, it doesn't say anything about it being macro uh sammy so no i love macro lenses so the lens that's on here right now is an 85 millimeter uh 1.8 um randy might know if that lens is a macro lens or not but it looks kind of nice but i'll tell you on this shot right here uh, I like to be a little taller, but I can't because I'm not zoomed in, so I can't make it taller. So call me a shrimp and call it a day. So um, Sammy says, I know what, but I will tell you some other time. <laughs> These are our resident cutie pie. 
Uh, Woody says, find some birds. That's a good idea. I wonder we got birds out in my backyard. Well, I, I will have to go out in the backyard because if I can go, if I can zoom up to 600 millimeters, oh my God, I can't think of anything. I, I could shoot from this room, maybe across the house into the TV room. 600 millimeters is mighty powerful. Okay, so that would probably be the right lens to shoot the uh, eclipse with. I didn't think of that. So we got that. So is today Palm Sunday or is next week Palm Sunday? So one of them. So I just want to make sure I say Happy Easter to everybody on the right day. Okay. So Woody says to find some birds. Feed the birds. Da, 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 da. That's some chitty chitty bang bang. Pop, 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 pop. All right. Charles says Ultra Fest is the largest techno musical festival. Um, and it's on in Miami. Uh, five million. Five million. You couldn't get five million in any place in Miami. So I think you're a little off on your numbers. But hey. You've been known to exaggerate before, Charles. This isn't something new, big guy. I know you. All right. So let's, if we're going to do something like that, let's make it 50 million. So it sounds 50 million are going to come. That is just amazing. So we got Shane from Aussie Land, Australia. Ooh, the 100 to 300. Yeah, I saw that out of the corner of my eye and I'm going like, I wonder how that's going to do on this G9 Mark II. So we're going to find out. So uh, we're going to open it today and mount it, but I can't go out in the backyard. It's pitch black out there, okay? So tomorrow I'm going to try. Uh, um, uh, Woody already told me to go find a birds or something. So I will try to find that and see if I can get some uh, pictures. So Sunday night when I do go live, maybe I can have some pictures on hand to share about this lens. So that'll be fun. And Bob is here. How you doing, Bob? Hi, everybody. Hi, Peter. Hi, Bob. Love you, Bob. I love everybody in here, especially Carlos. <laughs> Carlos is the daily man. You guys have a young man, uh, a, a, a grandson, a son. Got to probably be in his 20s or late, late, late teens. Uh, Carlos has a show called The Daily Man. And it's designed to help a man today because, you know, they, they're slurring so many lines. This person can go to the opposite bathroom and they make fun of you because you're gay or they make fun of you because you're not gay. Uh, so be, being a man today, unless you got a good, strong father figure or a good, strong grandfather or uncle, some of these young guys and even middle-aged guys, they need a hand on setting up their mentality on being a man. So he's got a whole show dedicated to that. It is Christian-based, so you know, but that's okay. He doesn't proselytize. Uh, he doesn't hide the fact that he's a Christian. So you see where it's in red? And it says, The Daily Man. So you're going to go to that channel, and you're going to follow. Okay? So uh, that is... Uh, what Carlos is uh, doing. And besides that, on his off hours, when he's got nothing better to do, he's a, a, a therapist, a licensed clinician, mental therapist. Boo! He treats me. Boo! Don't I look good? Boo! <laughs> I'm just playing. All right. So good to see you here, Carlos. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, so Joey says, Peter, I'm not happy with you. Joey, Joey, I'm going to come and get you. You're not happy with me. Joey, 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 I'm coming for you, big guy, okay? Uh, you haven't added me as a moderator yet. Well, I'm not adding any more moderators. I got, I'm tuning in my moderators, and we don't really need moderators here. Not at all, Okay. So I got the one that's got a phone line directly to me, and I got him in the phone so he can call me if something goes wrong, okay? And nobody else can call me while I'm live. Joey, everybody else cannot call me when I'm live, okay? Only Sammy, all right? Um, and Randy. So because 
uh, we have a special deal, under the table deal, cash. We have a cash deal working under the table. So uh, Charles is still on his five million kick. And Joey says, can you add me? No, I'm not adding. I'm not adding any more moderators, Joey. You can moderate through Sammy. You and Sammy are always together, so it, it doesn't matter. So the answer to anybody new wanting to be a moderator uh, I'm actually reducing moderators, okay? Not gaining more moderators. So uh, Jim says Sunday. Oh, so this Sunday is Palm Sunday. So happy Palm Sunday, everybody. Happy uh, Palm Sunday, Joey, Charles, uh, Carlos, Randy, everybody that's in here. Happy Palm Sunday this Sunday. Well, remind me to say it this Sunday, okay? So I still want to stay on track. <laughs> when I do get off track, uh, Sammy is like, Peter talks a lot dot com. <clears throat> Cheers. I'm having some hot chocolate. If you're not having hot chocolate, you don't know what you're missing out on. That's right. It's so good. Oh, I'm not using sugar in it. I'm using something called monk fruit. So if that um, catches your ear, get a liquid form of monk, monk fruit and not the powder form. The powder form clumps up. You got to put it through a blender or you got to be stirring like a whirlpool while you add the monk fruit. It's really not worth it. But the liquid, you just add the drops that you want. So I actually put three quarters of a teaspoon of liquid monk fruit in here and uh, oh my god chocolate silk amazing this is fantastic ah so thank you Jim for telling me and Joey says how are you though I'm doing good how are you feeling tonight Joey I know you had uh, uh, a lot of activity this afternoon. I know you went to the movies yesterday. Didn't you go to the movies yesterday? So, or is that Friday? One of those days. I have to get uh, Sammy to tell me. He did tell me, but I don't remember what movie you boys went to see. I hope it wound up being good. So, um... Uh, in the blues, I'm keen to see how you go with it. It's a lens I want to try. Good stuff. Okay, you can uh, you can connect up with me and, and get me to do stuff. <laughs> uh, Mr. Camera Junkie says maybe you can go to a park near your home. That's a possibility. I don't know if there's anyone here to take me, but we could try. Uh, Charles says it's all in Bayside. Oh, Bayside? Bayside is awesome. You guys come down to Miami, and you're going to go in the downtown area. Bayside is where you want to go. Okay? So uh, it's downtown Miami. The tickets cost $1,800 per day. Uh, and there's 5 million people going. We're, we're talking about a little bit of chump change, aren't we there? $1,800 per day at 5. But come on. Charles, you could do better than that, dude. You make it around two thousand dollars a day and make it fifty million, so that would be a half a billion dollars. Now that would be great for Miami. Bup bup bup. Sammy said he's thinking of getting a new lens. I don't know what Sammy's gonna buy, but it's gonna be interesting. Sammy has me interested in anamorphic lenses. Believe it or not, this camera will shoot anamorphic lens, uh, and it's got the settings already built into the camera. This is a wonderful camera. Uh, if you could, uh, uh, if you have the type of uh, photography or video where a micro four thirds sensor size, uh, which is below the uh, APS-C and below full frame, but definitely much bigger, like four times bigger than a one inch, okay, this guy's got amazing stuff built into it. It's got ProRes. It's got uh, some type of RAW. I don't know if it's got ProRes RAW. I should look this up again because I see so many cameras. I forget. It's got all eye in it. 
Um, it's got probably one of the best or one of the top end uh, image stabilization systems in it. Um, I was just talking to somebody about this uh, over the last few days. You know that a smaller sensor does better than a bigger sensor when it comes to image stabilization. It's just a part of the way things work. So if you have a full frame camera like the ZF that you're looking now at that, that's a full frame camera. So the image stabilization on this is going to be better than that. And the image stabilization on your iPhone is going to be better than this, okay? Because the smaller sensors can have to move a lot less movement, okay? So I'm not willing to get into an argument with anybody over it. If you don't know what you're talking about, you don't know what you're talking about. What can I tell you? <laughs> a little bit egotistical there, right? All right, but the smaller sensors. So this image stabilization is fantastic because it has got a smaller sensor. It's harder for my E1, which has got one of the best stabilizations. It's harder for it to do the stabilization that it does. And it's got to crop pretty deeply. It has to move the sensor around a lot. Where on this guy, it has to move the sensor around just a little bit. Okay? So there is a lot of advantages to having a micro four-thirds sensor. A l uh, not everybody can swallow that. Okay? So to each his own. I'm not here to talk anybody into a certain type of camera, one over the other, all right? But um, that is one of the secrets to Micro Four Thirds. Because it is a smaller sensor, you get a lot better uh, image stabilization response. Now, that doesn't mean you give up your full frame camera, sell everything, and run over to here. I didn't say that, so let's not make turn me into a martyr, okay? Don't shoot me down when I'm talking real good, all right? So... But that is one of the advantages. The another advantage is a 300 millimeter lens will act and give you the focal length, uh, focal view, not length, focal view of a 600 millimeter lens. So Sammy is looking into getting a new lens. Bob says, Peter, I am shooting drone shots for three different House Hunters episodes in March. I've already finished two and I have one more to go. Well, what, what's today's date? The 22nd? I can't see it too well. I think it says 22nd. Yeah, March 22nd. Okay. So you got like eight days. And time's up. Ding! So that is pretty cool. Mark is in the house. How you doing, buddy? I love you, Mark. I love you, Sammy. I love you, Bob. Uh, it's I love all you guys. But I like to say it directly. It makes you, got, it makes you feel good, right? Uh, hey, Peter, how's it going? I'm headed to Seattle tomorrow. Wow, cross country. Going to national parks and the coast to take some pictures. At last, somebody's taking some pictures. We have all these cameras, and all we do is fall in love with the camera. I mean, if it was a human being, we'd be having sex with our cameras. Let's behave, Peter, okay? But we are in love with the cameras. I really am itching for another swallow of my silky smooth chocolate silk hot chocolate. And it has reached exactly the right temperature. I was double dipping, sorry. So you'll be on a plane for tomorrow. So you guys that are prayer warriors, Pray for Mark that he goes and uh, to and comes back from Seattle safely on his plane flight. And while he's out there, that he's safe and healthy. So we're, we're going to pray for you, Mark. So that will be great. I'm going to the National Park and the coast to take some pictures. That's what he said. Oh, look who we got in here tonight. Mr. FX30. Hi, everybody. It's good to see you, Mr. FX30. How are all of my camera friends today? Uh, it's fantastic to see you here. He's one of our newest members to our group, Mr. FX30. What camera do you think he's using? I'll give you three guesses. And the first two don't count. Well, let's do it this way. The first two, boing, don't count. 
This is the ring finger, so don't get excited. Okay. So good to see you here, Mr. FX30. I love you. Thank you for being here. Bop, 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 bop. Dish. Uh, dish. Uh, Jim says, monk fruit, not dish soap. That's for sure. You, push, you put uh, dish soap in here, and I'll be doing bubbles. Mmm, 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 mmm. I'm going to have to do this on the Kitchen Channel, or maybe on the Patreon channel, um, you know, because I do an almost daily blog on the Patreon channel. So, no, not dish soap. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> That's kind of like an inside show, uh, uh, joke. So Randy says, I just put the 2X teleconverter uh, with the 100 to 400 uh, using the, um, oh, the ZFC with the teleconverter. That makes it uh, 800, not including the 1.5 crop. So with a 1.5 crop, you take 800, cut it in half, that's 400. So that's going to give him a, a, a 1,200. Dang, don't get anywhere near me. You'll be able to see the, that nose hair that I can't wait. And maybe I'll need, I can't get that nose hair. So maybe if I, I look at it through your lens, 1,200 millimeters. Holy mackerel. You'll be able to take a picture of the moon tonight, and it'll be absolutely stunning. Um, so better than stunning. Sammy says, I was talking to one of my buddies and said, I'm shooting... On the gimbal, should I get a wider lens? Are you asking me or are you asking your buddy? Well, uh, if you're shooting with the FX30, which I'm pretty sure you are, I would say you've got some pretty decent crop room because you got a 25 megapixel sensor on there. So I would say, yeah, you can get a little bit of a wider lens. Absolutely. So um, Jerry wants me to shoot car videos for him. So he wants a little bit wider. I uh, was thinking of a 16 or an 18. Um, I would just go for the Gusto, honestly. And I would get, uh, if you could afford it, get the 10 to 18 from Sigma. It's a 2.8 lens, which is better than the F4 lens. Okay. Or get the Sony 11 millimeter, millimeter F1.7. Those are the two wide lenses that I absolutely love using. Okay, so the uh, so the 10 uh, to 18 is going to bring you in at 16 millimeters. Okay, so that would uh, that would be actually perfect for you. Uh, look into whatever you can get the better deal on because Amazon is having some kind of a special, right? They're trying to instigate like a a Black Friday type thing around the Easter time now. I don't know how they're doing with it. I haven't seen anything on sale that I particularly care for, but that is what they're pushing right now. So I'll repeat myself, Sammy, okay? A Sigma brand, E-mount, 10 millimeter, 18 millimeter, F2.8 for your E-mount, or the Sony brand, uh, F11, no, not F11, Focal length 11, so 11 millimeters, f1.7. Now, I have that one here because Randy gave that to me for, was it my birthday, Randy? Uh, so I have that 11 millimeter. That winds up being about 17, so it's between 16 and 18, okay? Um, and I use that all the time on my E1. You would absolutely love it on your crop FX30, Sammy. Absolutely love it. Okay, so here we have a, a little bit of a voice of reason. So this is Lewis. UltraFest has around 150,000 to 107, 170,000 attendees, uh, and everything else is live streamed. Oh, so I'll be able to take a look at that online. Okay, so that's a lot different than 5 million. <laughs> okay, especially at $1,800 a person. I don't know if I believe that either. Who's going to pay $1,800? Maybe it's $18. Maybe he meant to put a period in there. Okay. Because I, you know, that's that's a lot of money. Thank you, Lewis. I appreciate that very, very much. I don't want Miami to get a bad rap. Okay. So uh, Sammy is asking me, when is Sony coming out 
with a shutter angle for the FX30, FX3. Um, I heard some rumors about that, but I don't remember what they are, but they should come out with the shutter angle. So the uh, G9 Mark II has shutter angle capabilities. Uh, the S5 has, well, that's, no, you're looking at the ZF, has shutter angle capabilities. So what is a shutter angle? It's a setting. It's a setting in your camera. So this one right here, the S5 Mark II. Uh, you could switch it from saying, I want to pick my shutter speed. So let's say 1 30th of a second, 1 60th of a second, whatever shutter speed you pick. All right. Instead of picking your shutter speed, you switch the camera over to work in shutter angle. Okay. And it will, it will automatically always keep the shutter angle in proper alignment with your 4K or any video. Uh, every any video that you work with all right so it's not out of synchronization adding more or less uh, frames which would give you a stutter every once in a while a stu stu stutter every once in a while did I stutter when I said stu stutter so every so many frames if things are not lined up right it'll drop a, uh, a frame or it will add a frame okay so by just turning on the 180th uh, I'm sorry, the 180 shutter angle. Oh, there's more choices than 180, by the way. You got 360, you got 90. So these are shutter angles. And I'm not going to give you a lesson on uh, shutter angles right now, but it's important to keep, if this looks like this, your shutter needs to match it. Okay, where are we? Over here. All right. So if it doesn't match it, your shutter could look like that, but this looks like that. All right. That's not a match. In Las Vegas, you don't win no money when that happens, okay? So by switching to the shutter angle setting, it's going to automatically put your camera... So if, if you're shooting in, in 30p, it's going to automatically set you up if you're at a 180-degree shutter angle. It's going to automatically make sure that you're running at uh, 1 60th of a second, all right? If you go to 24p, here's where some of the magic happens. It's not going to go to 1 50th of a second. It's going to actually put the camera in 1 48th of a second shutter speed. And that's one of the advantages of having a shutter angle setting. Okay. Uh, more and more cameras are coming out with that. But uh, it, it, it's something that should be coming. Uh, Funnel Fest. Hi, you doing fun? Fun, fun, fun. Till fun. Yeah, Daddy takes the T-shirt away. Not the T-shirt. The T-bird. <laughs> Where's my T-shirt? Okay. Uh, the S5 Mark II is still looking. They're all looking pretty good, right, Fun? They're all looking pretty good. Uh, Charles says, are you going to shoot the Eclipse with the 600-millimeter uh, lens? I thought about that. I, I even mentioned it uh, a while ago. Well, I didn't even realize it till tonight. So Sammy says, uh, I love the FX30. Next is falling in love with the red camera. I wonder if red camera is going to come out with a yellow model. I don't know why they would come out with a yellow model. Wouldn't that be ironic? Red camera's new model, the yellow. <laughs> Do I like this? Let me check. Let me just check. Let me double check for you, okay? Yeah, I like it. So sexy. Have you ever had a sexy drink? It's very smooth. Um, should I tell you... Uh, should you tell the fans about your new favorite dish that I told you about? Yes, yeah, Sammy introduced me to something called a New Jersey Sloppy Joe. There's no sloppy joe in it. There's no meat sauce, okay? So what it is is a slice of rye bread, all right? Then they put some kind of a dressing. I, I don't know if it's Russian or Thousand Island or something to that effect. Then they put some meat. Then they put some coleslaw. Now, here's the secret, okay? Then they put some cheese. Then they take another piece of bread, and they put some more dressing on it. But wait, there's more, like $19.95. But wait, there's more. 
Okay, so you put that together and then you build the sandwich all over again. Sandwich, okay? Like, uh, like what, well, who's got the triple, uh, the Big Mac, okay, from McDonald's? Then you put more meat, more cheese, uh, more dressing, more coleslaw. Then you put another slice of bread. And then that is called a New Jersey Sloppy Joe. Now, I'm going to make that on my kitchen channel, but I'm going to make it my way. I'm not going to make it and then look at it so I can't eat it. So I'm going to use a zero-carb, zero-sugar, zero-carb uh, bread, okay? And then instead of putting the meats that I might not like, I'm going to put the meats that I do like. And uh, where they have a, another piece of bread, uh, I'm going to put another layer of coleslaw. And then I'll build it again and then put the top piece of bread because I'm not going to eat three pieces of bread, okay? I'm not breaking my diet for Sammy or Joey or Ralph or, or anybody, okay? I'm losing weight. That's my target. But I can tell you, I made the coleslaw, and I'm slapping this coleslaw. I made the best coleslaw ever. I'm not kidding. I made the most amazing coleslaw in the world. Coleslaw is coleslaw. You go to KFC, you get a decent thing of coleslaw, and it tastes good. Oh, no, baby. My coleslaw tastes so good. No sugar or low sugar or not. It is the best, most amazing coleslaw, and I'm going to teach you how to make it. Okay? You want me to teach you right now? I can. It's that simple to make. Nah, I'm not going to teach you. I was going to just, I was just going to splurge. I'll put it on my Patreon video. So, uh, Sammy, what did he say? I like the prime cine lenses, Peter. My buddy Norm is here. We're just rolling into Passover. Have a happy, safe, wonderful Passover, uh, Norm, uh, if you're celebrating Passover. Are the kids coming over? Merry Christmas, Peter. Good evening, Greggies. And around the world, driving through a snowstorm, but I'm listening. Oh, please drive carefully. I don't want to lose anybody, especially people like you guys that I love, like Norm. So uh, if you're out driving, I'm guessing, what time is it? It's a uh, quarter to 11 here. Are you in the same time zone as me? I don't, I, um, I know you told me, but I can't remember. So um, the point is... Drive carefully, buddy. And uh, did the kids come over for the beginning of Passover? Because I think Passover is starting. So, anyway, we love you, Norm. Drive safely, buddy. Okay? Uh, only issue is that B&H is closed tomorrow. Well, usually they are closed on Saturday. I don't know if you've noticed that, Sammy. But, you know, every time you go there on a Saturday and you pound on the doors and they don't open it up, and then you bring Joey with you to pound on the doors, and they don't open it up. Um, I don't know. You need to maybe not go on a Saturday. Bah! <laughs> I'm playing with you, Sammy, okay? It seems like uh, Charles is fixated on the Ultra Fest. So let's give him a little tap on the back and tell him, okay, Charles, it'll be okay. There is no problem. Not only are we going to have the Ultra Fest, we're going to have uh, down uh, in the Grove, we're going to have the Art Festival, we're going to have the car uh, show at uh, Miami Beach. Um, this month we had the tennis, we had the, the raceway, the Miami Raceway. So there's a lot of stuff. Miami is a happening city, folks. They are definitely a happening city here. It's not Oklahoma where everything is just so quiet and nothing happens in Oklahoma. They don't have earthquakes and shootings. They don't open new conservative banks called All Glory that promises not to sell your information. Oh, I did open a, a bank account at Old Glory. So Miami is not quiet and mundane like Oklahoma. I'm picking on Sly. I'm hoping to get a reaction out of her. So, no, I love everybody everywhere. It's just when you pick on a territory, people rise up and, you want to fight with me? Hmm? You come, come on, come on, get closer. 
And then they get into their boxing stance. Okay. Boom. 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 All right, Sly. Stop hitting me. I can't take it no more. So, anyway. Tonight is when I have uh, fun. That's what Friday night is about. Okay, Charles, no offense, buddy. I'm not talking about the uh, Ultra Fest anymore. You're starting to sound like a commercial uh, unless they pay me. I'm not going to be a commercial for uh, that event. You've said oh, uh, at least four or five posts on it. So just in uh, uh, to be, uh, uh, you know, to everybody else, they've had their due on my show. All right. So that's not aimed at you, Charles. It's just aimed at keeping things level. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's all. Look at me when I say that. That's all. <laughs> so Randy said the Sigma 10 to 18 2.8. Uh huh. Oh, it's $5.99. So we did get the price. All right. So that is a fantastic. If I was going to shoot cars, I would either use that one. Or the 11 millimeter, because the 11 millimeter will go to 1.7. So uh, the 2.8 is great, but the Sony's is a f4. All right, so what's the problem with the f4? You've got to raise your shutter speed, you know, and in cars, they've got digital things, and that's going to make it look flashing. So you need to lower your shutter speed so it doesn't look like the front lights are blinking or the dashboard is blinking. That means you're not in sync. So Sammy said that him and Joey might start a car channel. I mean, they go enough to different cars, okay? They're all over the place, and I want Joey to go and check out because he's very much into electric cars, which I happen to like. And now that Tesla has opened their um, charging station, they're going to be the biggest electric gas station in the world. So they've opened it to Mercedes, Ford, General Motors, uh, Rivian... I think Volvo, BMW, they're all in 2020, starting in 2025, all the electric cars from those companies and more. There's only one company that's actually holding up, holding out. And I think it's Volkswagen, but I'm not sure, okay? Because Volkswagen also has a charging network, but I'm not sure that's the correct one. So, uh, felt itchy there. All right, so... Uh, They've opened up their charging network, and now like Ford, my friend just bought a, um, uh, he's like a brother, all right? He just bought a Ford F-150 Lightning, which is an electric uh, vehicle, okay? And it is, uh, uh, he's, he's got coming because it's back-ordered so that he can go to any Tesla's supercharger and charge, Okay. So uh, Tesla has a version, I think, 2 and 3 and 4. So on the Tesla supercharger pumps, okay, if it's a version 4, uh, the adapter's already built in. So you can go in there with your Ford F-150. You can go with your General Motors uh, Silverado pickup truck or with the Cadillac Lyric. So that's what's got my attention is the Cadillac Lyric. Um and the other one that's got my attention is the uh, Genesis uh, GV80. I think it's a GV80. Okay. But uh, the Cadillac has my attention. So why don't I just stick with what I really love, which is the Tesla? I love the Tesla. Uh, at my age, you know, I have my, my mother's old Lincoln, 1997. That car drives like a Cadillac which is a poor choice of words because it's a Lincoln, the competitor to the Cadillac. You go down the road, there's no bumps, there's no sound, there's no wind noise. It's smooth as Aladdin's rug, okay, the flying carpet. All right, so te Tesla does pretty good, but it doesn't have a Lincoln ride, okay? Now, I didn't want to go outside of Tesla because without the supercharging network, it'd be kind of stupid to buy anything other than a Tesla. You'd just be downright making a bad choice, okay? Because, uh, you know, contrary to what people think, oh, it takes so long to, to fill up the pump on the electric chargers. No, that's all wrong, okay? Let me set the record straight. If you're on a trip, not at home, okay? 
at home, you're probably going to charge overnight. You're going to come home from wherever you go. You plug in your charger. Tomorrow morning, you've got a full tank of uh, juice, electricity. All right. Now, what if you're going to go, like, what if I was going to go visit Sammy in New Jersey? All right. Uh, and I'm going to take my electric car. So all I need to do, and the way that Tesla, the programming, see, Tesla has got like a flight control. So they program your trip for you. Okay, and, un and until they opened up the Tesla superchargers, you had to work with like uh, uh, EV America or what the other ones are called, you know, EV Go or something to that effect. All right, so the most on a trip, the absolute most time that you would spend at a charger is 15 minutes. You're just charging it enough to go to the charger that the, the uh, trip planner is uh, sending you to connect up again. And again, over there, it could be 8 minutes, it could be 12 minutes, okay? Only if you're in an area where there's very few chargers, like maybe in the middle of nowhere, where it's all farmland, okay, over there they might make you charge longer because the distance between the stations is farther apart. But in, like, up the corridor to go from Miami to New York on I-95, okay, or to go east-west. What's the main corridor east-west from, uh, let's say, North Carolina to California? Uh, one of those I's. Is it I-26? I don't remember what the I is, okay? They've got superchargers everywhere. You go to most cities in Texas, superchargers everywhere. You go to most cities here in Miami, superchargers everywhere. You go in New Jersey, New York, superchargers everywhere. So, uh, you know, unless you've got a unique experience uh, or a situation is a better word, you're not going to spend any more than 10 to 15 minutes at a supercharger if you're tripping. Okay. Now, if you're home, you're going to plug it in and you're going to go in the house. You're not going to come out to the next morning. What do you care how long it takes? You put it on a 220 like a dryer plug and it's going to charge at about 40 miles an hour. So in 10 hours, is 400 miles. You don't have 400 miles in hardly any of these cars, <laughs> okay? So in about, if you're empty, empty, you're going to fill it up. So this is one of the misconceptions about electric cars. There's a lot of misconceptions about electric cars. So Chicago just went through hell because of the uh, cold weather, the snow, and the electric cars got stranded uh, they got what they call iced, okay, and stuff like that. That's only because the user doesn't know how to use his car, right? The battery likes to be charged when it's in a temperature range of about 50, I'm going to round it out, 50 degrees to 80, 85 degrees. If you're below 50 degrees, okay, you turn on a switch and it prepares the battery and brings it up into that temperature envelope. Below that envelope, it trickles in like a drop. You ever see those Chinese movies where they're torturing somebody by dropping a drop on their forehead every half minute? Well, that's what happened in Chicago. These people did not know to pre-set uh, up their car so that they would be in the right temperature envelope so it would charge right up. So you got these people there charging for seven, eight hours because it's trickling in. So you have to prepare your battery. Now, here in Miami, if the battery is up at 95, 100 degrees and it's overheated and you, and you tell it, you tell the car you're going to charge it up, it's going to cool the battery down below 85 degrees. It's going to prepare the car to be charged. And if you're not in that envelope, it just trickles the electricity in. So now you got a, a lot of people in Chicago that are yelling, foul, foul, these electric cars, they don't work good, they don't work good. No, it's your brain that doesn't work good. Okay, you need to learn how to use your car. There's something called a direction book. And almost all, not every one, because I did find one or two that didn't have it, you can pre-set uh, uh, pre up your car so by the time you arrive at your charger, it is prepared to suck in that juice, baby, at its full power. And if you're not in that temperature range, 
you're going to be sour grapes and you're going to blame everybody except yourself. It's Tesla. It's Ford. It's Volvo. It's General Motors. They suck. They suck. They don't do these electric cars. I'm going back to gasoline. Well, you know what? You should go back to gasoline because you don't know what the H-E double hockey sticks you're doing. And instead of blaming the person who should be blamed, you're blaming everybody else. And that's, and the news media loved it. They took it and ran with it. Oh, electric vehicles are dead. Chicago is shut down. It takes hours to charge your car. Well, just prepare it. And you'll be out of there in about, you know, if you need a full charge, you might be out of there in about 30 minutes, 35 some cars are even uh, will give you up to 80% in 18 minutes. That's the Kia and the Hyundai. They got a, a really good rapid charger in there. But it's got to be prepared before you go to the charging station. Now, when you go home, what do you care? Okay, you go home, you plug your car in, you go inside, you play with your wife or your husband, you uh, make a new baby or you watch TV like uh, all in the family and you sit there in front of the TV, all my children. Okay, no, I don't have the right show. The one where he keeps putting his hand in his pants and he doesn't want to do anything but watch TV all night. Not all in the family, not all my children. All my children is a, a daytime soap opera. Um, one of those. So that's your lesson tonight. Now, how does that translate to cameras? Believe it or not, it does. Because if it's, be if it's zero degrees outside and you want to charge this battery... Okay, it's going to take a long time because the lithium ion is what is in the Teslas and all the other cars. It needs to have an optimum battery temperature to charge these guys up. So if you're going to the South Pole, you need to get a pouch so you can protect your batteries so that you can charge your batteries. Or you're going to be sitting there all night. Hello, Mr. North Pole. Okay, it won't take the charge very quickly in your battery, okay, or in your car. So we, we got an un- solicited battery lesson tonight and then the other part is you're not going to fill the car up every single time it's not a gas station it's an e it's an electric station you're going to fill it up just enough to go to your next station with a little buffer left over you're not going to run it down to zero you're, you're going to run it down to about 10 percent charge and then the car is going to lead you to a gas station or ev station somewhere on your route it knows to do that. You don't even have to think. You could be an old lady. I don't think we have any old ladies in here. Do we have any old ladies? If you're an old lady, raise your hand. Okay. And the car takes care of all that. But with the news media that just lies, lies, lies and doesn't tell you the truth about anything, okay, they're going to just spin it their way. And it's just absolutely not true. It's like, imagine the news media going, you can't use your camera in the winter. In New York, in New Jersey, Sammy would laugh his head off. But that's what the news media will do. MSNBC, CNBC, YouTube, they're all going to lie and tell you you can't use your camera because it's too cold. Well, that ain't true. Okay? And you know better. I know better. You and me and a dog named Boo. You know who knows a lot about old songs? Sammy. He just shocks me. So Sammy says, you love the cost law. I love my cost law. Oh, my God. I have, I have come up with the magic recipe for cost law. Where does this come from? When I was a kid, um, mid to upper teens, okay, a little younger than Sammy, all right, I used to have uh, lunch almost every day when my future kind of like father-in-law, it's my brother's wife's dad, okay, they all in the family. We call him our father-in-law to all of us, okay. And he worked at or owned a restaurant, and he made the best cost law in the world. I would have three, four helpings of cost law. And he'd say, Peter, you're going to eat me out of house and home. Stop eating so much cost law at the restaurant. I didn't want the food. I wanted the cost law. And when the man passed away, God rest his soul, he's in heaven, a believer in Jesus. Okay. Um, nobody knew his recipe. <laughs> and I have been trying... So when did he pass away? I think he passed away way before my dad. All right. I think he passed away way before my mother. So we're talking about 
in the middle 2000s, 2005, 2008. So um, I just can't repeat his coleslaw recipe. I have tried everything I can think of, okay? And then, you know, you get these, I call them hillbillies, but I don't mean it in a bad sense. I mean it in every respect of the word, kind of like an old elderly grandmother type of a person, shared her coleslaw recipe. And damn, if it wasn't the best thing I have ever tasted. So I modified it a little bit. It's, it's uh, almost identical, if not better. He would roll over in his grave if I told him my recipe is better than yours. Because, you know, the Greeks, it's like, mine is the best and nobody is better. I am the best. Okay. Then in the bios megalo. Okay. So I'm talking to you Greek. I got so excited. I'm talking to you in Greek. So, uh, but now... I put it with my eggs. I put it on my hamburgers. I put it on my hot dogs. I put it in my sandwiches. I put it on my steak. I put it on my hand and lick it up. No, I don't do that, but I was trying to be funny. Okay. So, um, here we go. So, Roy is here. How you doing, Roy? Good to see you, buddy. One of, one of my favorite people. Oh, he's down in Australia also. Way down in Aussie land. Way, way down under is my friend Roy. Down in Aussie land, he sings his song and he shoots his camera all day. I got, I got into a singing mood there for a second. Okay, so uh, Randy is saying the Sony E11 1.8 lens is $549. $499 on sale. The sale ends 331. Okay, so that would be great. Randy, you concur? That would be great to shoot car pictures. He's got a uh, crop sensor, the FX30. So they got to get in. They got to shoot the dashboard, show how much room is in the back seat, uh, show the electric uh, works of the seats, how to raise it up, down, forward, and back. So the 11 millimeters, I'm thinking, would be awesome. Absolutely awesome. I would, I would even like the 10 millimeters a little bit more. Okay. So uh, so that's actually cheaper than the Sigma. And you would be getting a, a, a native Sony lens. So that's a winner, winner, chicken dinner. So Norm says same time zone. Passover is at a couple of weeks. Okay. So Passover is on the same calendar, I believe, as the Greek Orthodox. Okay. Because everybody's on the Julian calendar. And Passover and the Greek Orthodox is on the Gregorian calendar. Okay, so our Orthodox Easter and the Passover usually coincide with each other. All right. I celebrate both, the American Easter and the Greek Easter. Heck, why not? I get lamb twice. And I cook it now. Okay. In the Instant Pot. So thank you for that, Norm. So tonight you were just having the Seder then. If the kids got together with you. Because I don't know why you would out, be out there in the middle of uh, the night in snowstorm. So Randy says the original price is five fifty and the sale is five hundred. Rounding it out, okay. All right, so we're gonna skip that, and I told you why. Um, Sammy says I had some amazing tacos today. Thinking about you when I was eating the tacos. Guess what, Sammy? I'd slap on coleslaw in my tacos. I, honest to God, I put my my my. All right, you you bent my arm. I will tell you how to make my coleslaw. Get a bigger bowl than you think, okay? Get a package of shredded cabbage, or you could shred your own. But I get angel hair shredded cabbage. It's basically like uh, regular coleslaw, but like angel hair spaghetti. It's finer, okay? Get one package of that. Open it up. I'm in the habit of washing and, and draining and drying just for safety's sake. I mean, it says pre-washed. Some of them say pre-washed, okay? So I will wash it, put it out to dry, all right? Now, in my big, big bowl, my big bowl, I got a big bowl, okay? Like that. Because mixing the coleslaw, it's going to fly all over the place. So you get yourself two nice helpings of mayonnaise. Now, you get the healthiest mayonnaise you want. I use Duke's. Or uh, I'll use an avocado mayonnaise or whatever mayonnaise you want. Two nice big helpings of mayonnaise. 
my secret ingredient, secret, secret, secret. Don't you tell anybody. Oh, you'll be pushing up daisies, okay? The same amount equals share. Two nice help helpings, tablespoons of sour cream. Sour cream. One teaspoon of apple cider vinegar right in the bowl, okay? Salt and pepper to taste. That means whatever you like. I also add one teaspoon of the dry powder Hidden Valley Ranch dressing, the salad dressing, not the liquid, the, the powder, because there's no sugar. There's no sugar in anything I've mentioned so far, okay? Or there's like one carb. And what else do I put in there? The vinegar, salt, pepper, uh, sour cream, mayonnaise. I think that's it. Then whip it up with a whisk. And here's another secret. Let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes. Okay? Yeah, it's going to thicken up by itself. Then take your coleslaw, the shredded cabbage, put it in, start mixing it. It should look like you don't have enough of the mayonnaise mixture. Okay? Mayonnaise and sour cream mixture. And it's always full fat. Don't, none of this 2%, 1%, skin milk, Sour cream bull crap, okay? Full fat, okay? Um, and it's going to look a little dry, all right? Now, here's the good, better, best. Good is you need to let it sit for two hours. Better is you need to let it sit for four hours. And best is you let it sit overnight. Now, that whole mixture that you made, okay, will fit in an empty 24-ounce uh uh, daisy sour cream pot. So if you save those with the lids, you've got your, your container for your uh, uh, coleslaw. And every day, it gets better. So when you get up the next morning, you open the top, stir it around, you're going to go, when did this get so freaking creamy? See, there's water in the shredded cabbage. It's going to come out, but it's going to take a long time. The vinegar is going to draw the water out, okay? Remember, we put in one teaspoon of vine vinegar, all right? Uh, salt and pepper to taste. So the next morning when you get up, you stir it around, put the cap on, you're ready to go. It is the creamiest, coldest, most delicious coleslaw you've ever had in your entire life. Okay, so Sammy says I'm able to get a 14 millimeter lens, a T3i for 150 from Adorama. But I have to wait uh, one day. Well, that means you're going to have to manually focus it, but that, that's fine. You do well with manual focus. Um, Charles says, why do you need a car? You really drive. All right, Charles, to make it as blunt as possible, why do I need a wiener? I rarely do anything with it. At 70 years old, okay, I just like to have a car. It makes me feel secure. You know, I fight anxiety and panic attacks and stuff, and there's just something very nice about having my 1997 Lincoln sitting in the car in the garage. It's what? How many years old is it? 25 years old? All right. Do you know how many miles is on it? Honest. First time around, 21,000. It's got 21,000 miles, and it's not with the odometer going around. Okay. I had the original tires, the 1997 tires on there. I had to change it because I thought they're going to probably fall apart. So uh, that's why I have to have a car. It's a personal choice. Why I want to buy, I use Sony. Why I happen to like the G9. All of that stuff is personal choice. Okay. So uh, Josh is here. Hi, Peter. Thank you for taking the time for answering my question the other day. I had a feeling you were looking for information and I was kind of reading between the lines, okay, and, and giving you more than you asked for, okay? Uh, because that's the point of me being on YouTube is to help people. But I do get sassy people and people that are smart Alex. They want to correct me, tell me what to do, what clothing to wear, you know, uh, don't show your T-shirt, so that kind of stuff. And that's just annoying. But when I see somebody is really looking for information, I do try. I do try to be as helpful. As a matter of fact, everybody in this room 
A lot of the people in this room, Josh, look at the names, okay? The names are in red, just so you know, all right? So you see where it says uh, Josh Ballinger, 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 okay? Now uh, the next one is Randy. He's got his own channel. All of the people in here are basically like family, okay? We help each other. They're a trustworthy bunch. They will have different opinions, don't get me wrong. And I'm the smartest one in the whole bunch. <laughs> don't get me wrong. No ego here, right? So I did take the time to answer you, okay? So uh, uh, Randy is talking to Charles, and Randy is talking to Sammy Superstar. Tuesday is the earliest you can get it from B&H. Yeah, because of the shipping. And Randy knows shipping. If you knew shipping like I know shipping, oh, 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 what a gal. Um, Roy says, I like the idea of EVs, but insurance companies mean that a small dent in the battery, mean that a small dent in the battery, and it's a write-off. I don't know how the insurance company treats it, to be honest with you. I believe, and here's another big pro for Tesla, I believe Tesla is willing to carry insurance for you instead of our big companies here like State Farm and whoever else they are. Okay, so, pop, pop, pop. So, Randy's saying, please give a like, a thank you for your support. Yeah, do we have any thumbs up here? Yeah, we got 12 thumbs up. Yay! We even got a thumbs down. Counts the same thing as a thumbs up. <laughs> Don't tell the guy. Okay, but it counts the same. It doesn't matter because YouTube looks for activity. So, they won't actually share my video or recommend it. If there's no activity. And it's the same thing with B&H. B&H is not going to give me another camera or another lens like I got here unless people actually go there. So if you want to do me a favor, go and click on the link to this lens, to B&H. Look around and then leave. They'll register that as somebody coming from my YouTube channel. Um, I put them right at the top so you don't have to go hunting for the links. So you go in the description down below. Look for the link to the G9 Mark II. Click on it. It'll take you to B&H. You'll see the price. You'll see comments and stuff like that. Look at something else if you've got an interest in B&H. And then go your merry way. No purchase required. Okay. So what you need to do is uh, click on it so they register uh, what uh, who people are coming there from. So I want them to see that there's people coming uh, from me to there. Okay, uh, so uh, Roy is saying rapid charging reduces battery life. Uh, lithium batteries don't like total discharge. You only want to come down uh, to, uh, you want to start filling your EV. Okay, I have done, uh, I will spend a night after night, all night long, studying EVs. I mean, the only one that I know that's smarter than me on EVs is Joey, Okay. Joey knows the, the, the EVs better, I mean, like the back of his hand. All right. So, um, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sounding egotistical, but I could tell when it's BS that comes in. So what Roy is saying is absolutely correct. You only charge your EV car up to 80% unless you're on a trip. Okay. So if I was going to go on a trip and I was going to go to North Carolina, I would charge my car up to 100% because I want to... I'm a guy. I'm headed towards down the road. I don't want to stop and charge. All right. And then uh, at 10% and under, you want to start preconditioning your battery to be charged. And your Tesla or your Lyric now, because you can go to the Tesla super stations, uh, superchargers, will tell you how far and, uh, and how many minutes to charge there, which is that's how EVs run. We don't do that with the gas car. The gas car never tells me I need, oh, it's time to get gas, and it's this many miles, and you need to precondition your your uh, your battery, your, your gas tank, okay? And you need to only put, you know, seven gallons in your car. That's the gasoline system. You go there, you fill it up, you go away, okay? EVs don't work like that. They work different. You go there, and the car tells you how long to charge for because you're on a destination trip. Now, if you're running around the city, none of that counts. None. All right? You pre-charge your car, you pre-condition your car on your way home from wherever you went that day, 
You come home, you plug it in, you go inside, watch TV, eat dinner. That's it. So let me keep an eye on, on the time because I don't want to walk. Oh, my gosh, I'm getting close to um, 11.14. All right. So let's go make this uh, quick. <laughs> it's pronounced coleslaw. Yeah, you're right. I say coleslaw. Coleslaw. Everybody makes fun of me. Coleslaw. I like my coleslaw. Up, 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 up. Uh, that's Sammy talking about Joey ta charging. I like my batteries uh, topped off by the time I go out. Roy says 11 millimeters on a crop isn't wide enough. It's getting into the 16, 17. No, actually 17. Okay, 17 and a half. Um, and Charles is talking to Randy. And Randy's talking to Charles. Uh, Funny says uh, he should have added in Ohio. I think I missed your... What did he say? It's pronounced coleslaw. Yeah, it's it's C O L E. It's coal, you know, like the like the guy's name, Cole. What's your name? My name is Cole. Okay, so it's supposed to be coleslaw, but with the slurring that I do, it comes out coleslaw, like C A W. Caw, caw, caw. I sound like a bird. Okay. So, Roy says it doesn't get cold here for EVs to get Teslicles. Boy, you're one letter away from the borderline. All right, so uh, Randy and Charles are chit-chatting. Uh, Funny's talking about Ohio. Uh, Roy says a car completes me. That's very good, Roy. Thank you. That, that would be the answer to your question, Charles. Why do I have to have a car? A car just makes me feel whole. There you go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It makes me feel good to have a car. Okay. Uh, you guys don't forget Sunday, God willing, the bridge ain't up. Uh, I'll be doing a live show, and it'll be on this lens, which I didn't even open tonight. But I will open it and start uh, taking some pictures so I can show, show and tell on Sunday night. This time of year on Fridays, there are fish fries everywhere. Fish sandwich, french fries, cold slaw. Very good, but not so good for you. Yeah, well, I don't do so bad. Cold slaw or anything, I'm happy. I am a happy camper. Okay, so... Um, so Sammy says he never ships from B&H. He goes to the store and picks it up. He does. Sammy goes to the store, uh, Randy, physically. It's like a candy store. So he's talking about uh, Joey and had uh, bash issues. I'm just speeding it up, guys, okay? Because I need to get offline because um, Sly is coming on. Uh, ba -ba 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 Joey said he doesn't want his dad to spend another 50K on another Tesla in under one year. So he will be getting a gasoline car. Is what I did speak to Joey today. So Joey is going to be getting a gas car probably. Unless I can talk him into something else. But Joey really, really loves going uh, to the Tesla store. I think they treat Joey like family. When they see Joey come in, hey, Joe, come on in. Have a seat. You're one of us. Joey should actually get a job there. Honest to God, he probably, Joey probably knows more about Tesla cars than the people that work at Tesla at those, at those places. Okay. So, um... Roy says, Crow's Law. Sammy said he might go to Adorama on Sunday. That's cool. Um, Charles is in a preaching mode. Christ is the only thing I need to make me whole. Well, you got that down, Pat. Okay, good for you, young man. Anybody says you're not a smart young man, they're lying. They're lying. They're lying. All right, guys. That's the end of our show tonight. If you're watching this on the Rewind, give me a comment because that lets me know you're participating. It's not going to help the channel, okay, but it helps me, all right? And you guys that are on my Patreon, I'll see you during the week. Uh, the rest of you, if you want to join me Sunday night, I'll have hopefully a 15-minute show, uh, but uh, I don't know how that's going to work out. And if you guys can keep me on track, I should be able to keep talking about one lens to 15 minutes. Dang, how long can I talk about that? 
All right. I love you guys. Um, we're heading towards uh, Holy Week for a number of different people here. And, uh, you know, um, oh, Sammy says that Joey tried to get a job many times before. Well, he needs to get friendly with the manager. And they need to give him a, a job, even if it's under the table. So, uh, Lewis will be on tomorrow night at 10 o'clock. See you there, or be square. Uh, Randy says, good night, everybody, and have a wonderful, wonderful week. Sounds like, uh, what's Mr. Bubbles? What's his name? Lawrence uh, Welk. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. All right, and I need to shut up. And yeah, I'll see you over at uh, Sly Show at 11.30, which is in 10 minutes. So I got time for a potty break. Maybe have a little coleslaw. <laughs> there you go. And and move on. All right. Uh, so there we go. Love you guys. Uh, thank you for being here. You are my family, and I appreciate you. Bye. <laughs>